Okay, imagine this. You just spent months creating an employer brand and employee value proposition that really resonates with internal employees and external applicants. One of the most difficult things now is to keep your employer branding consistent across a variety of channels and recruitment marketing campaigns. Today, we're gonna to be discussing how you can maintain brand consistency across platforms, channels, and campaigns. My guest is Senior Employer Branding Specialist Hallie Sasser, and she's got some great insights on how to make your employer brand more consistent. Please welcome to the show, Hallie Sasser. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, before we jump right in, tell me a little bit about your background and what you're doing right now. I am an employer brand specialist. I currently work at Docebo, which is a really awesome e-learning company. Right, you got to um, say it properly. Docebo. Yes. <laughs> Docebo. We are Italian. <laughs> so it's a really exciting place to work. And I sit on the talent acquisition team. And so I do a lot of different things, everything from... Uh, you know, reputation management, uh, partners and contracts and partnerships like that, um, candidate experience initiatives, partnering with our marketing teams for not only social media, but also just anywhere external, like our careers website, where we're trying to show off our awesome employer brand. Were you involved in the decision-making process on putting employer branding inside of talent acquisition as opposed to inside of marketing? I was not a part of that decision, but I'm actually really happy that this position lies with talent acquisition because it's really great to kind of have like those boots on the ground of knowing exactly what is going on, what we're trying to hire for at different times. And I think that if you sit in marketing, you kind of lose that um, recruiting knowledge of what's actually going on in the business. So it's, it's really great to kind of sit on the HR side of things. I mean, if you think about it, there's two, even though they are aligned, right? But um, marketing has a very specific activity, which is drive um, client, you drive revenue, drive sales, things like that. But talent acquisition is driving the hiring engine, right? To help mm -hmm. all of that. Um, and even though they should be aligned, they are two very different things. And I've always found it curious when companies decide to put recruitment marketing or employer branding underneath a marketing umbrella. And I think that usually they're doing this because of they've got access to, you know, the various um, uh, marketing models. So Facebook ad campaigns, mm -hmm. so they've got a, a layer of expertise that maybe somebody in talent acquisition doesn't bring to the table, which is fine. I mean, I hit my microphone. Um, yeah, I get it, but you know, what's your kind of take on that? And I think it's important to have that kind of re marketing knowledge in this role, which I did. I got my undergrad degree in advertising. I did a business master's. So I kind of knew all of that marketing and advertising stuff before I got into the recruiting world. And I was able to bring that into uh, this role. So I, I do agree. I think that, um, the whole key is to really, if your company has an employer branding person, that person needs to be able to work really well cross-functionally, and they need to have really strong relationships with the marketing team. And sometimes that's difficult, but uh, I've had really awesome experiences so far with, at least with the companies I've worked at. Awesome. So today's show is all about how to make your employer brand more consistent employer branding strategies and either across platforms or across uh, campaigns. If you have, just throw out two or three things that a company should really do or be doing to make sure that they have that consistency across the campaigns and across the platforms. So we run a lot of um, pipeline builder campaigns on LinkedIn. And, you know, there's twofold to that. There's the brand awareness piece and then there's the lead generation piece. And you want to make sure that your ads that you're using for both of those types of campaigns are aligned with kind of your corporate brand. So I always make sure to, whenever I'm setting up that campaign, I connect with our marketing team. I see if, you know, hey, we're thinking of this for an ad. Like, could the graphic designer and marketing create something for me? Or if they don't have the resources, then I'll kind of make something and then just make sure that it's kind of approved by them. 
um, they always want everything approved. So we always <laughs> want to make sure we, we do that to keep that consistency. But on the other hand, a con- employer brand can be more like playful and fun, I think, than a consumer brand is. So um, it's always good to kind of push those boundaries a little bit with the marketing team. If, if they give you some pushback, you know, you can say, this is our, this is our people brand. This is us trying to attract candidates to want to work here. And so that's why we should kind of maybe be a little more casual or playful in, in this post specifically. And, you know, if they're ever worried about that, it's always good to say that these campaigns are only going to these specific audiences. So for example, we did, um, we did one for engineers in Italy. And so, you know, if they're concerned at all about something not looking quite on brand, we could say, you know, there's really only 10,000 people that we're targeting with this. And, um, you know, that usually puts them at ease. Yeah, 10,000 is actually a pretty big candidate pool. Um, When you're talking, most um, jobs only have one position. Right. So unless you're hiring like a thousand people, you don't really need to reach out to 10,000. Mm-hmm. There's no need, need for it. Right. Um, so I, I think that corporate branding and marketing, they have a tendency to think, well, this stuff is going to be going out on YouTube and you know tons of Internet channels. And we're going to be marketing to millions and millions of people. that are going to be seeing it. It's not the case with employer branding. <laughs> We've got one job. We just need a, an account mm-hmm. rep in Italy or we're hi- hiring 10 you know, software developers in Italy, I, I don't need 10,000 people to see this ad. I need like a thousand mm-hmm. at, at the most, or maybe 5,000. Um, mm-hmm. So really small talent pools are typically, and a lot of these positions, they may only need 20 or 30 people to make the hire, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you're not sandblasting this out to everybody. One of the things that I find is really important to maintain your employer brand consistency is, and I see that most companies don't have this, They've got it on the corporate side, but they don't necessarily have it on the employer brand side. Setting some brand guidelines, clear rules and standards for visual and written materials is really important. What I mean, do you guys have a written set of brand guidelines to cover your tone, your voice, your mm-hmm. color palette? You know, here's what a button looks like, you know, logos, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, we definitely have that on our kind of like our product branding, our corporate brand side. But I think that's a really great idea to kind of create one for employer brands specifically, because it can be a little different for sure. And in terms of like even photography uh, rules that you might have in place, it's like, okay, well, you know, it might be nice to show off an employee working from home at their like at home desk, even if it's not the best, you know, quality photo or the best, um, you know, in terms of like lighting and things like that, it's always good to share those things. And even if you want to share it on a a platform, that's more like kind of short term and not such hard posts like Instagram stories, or, you know, even Twitter, it's kind of like, there's so many tweets happening a day that it could get lost. Um, that could, it will. (laughs) Yeah. In a matter (laughs) of seconds. Right. But I think it's nice to share those kind of you know, even more less professional looking things on, on your platforms, because that's what makes it more real. Yeah. But you you don't want to get into a situation where you have like a bait and switch almost, right? I see a a lot of companies, Mm -hmm. they are, you know, putting pictures that would absolutely indicate that this is a remote or work from home type situation. And then you read the job description and must be on site, right? So the imagery Mm -hmm and doesn't really align to what the messaging is inside of there, right? The, I, I get it. A nurse has, to, an OR nurse, they've got to be on site, right? <laughs> that doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. You're not going to be able to call that one in. Um, so make sure that you, you've got your images or your imagery aligned to the messaging that's actually down to the individual job post, not just mm-hmm. over in your overall employer branding is kind of my mm-hmm. recommendation. Color palette is obviously important. And this gets really difficult when we're working with websites, right? So what recommendations do you have there? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that um, candidates are looking for in a website and a lot of different um, 
just best practices that everyone should have on their web careers websites. Um, you know, a lot of people, they do a lot of research before they apply to a job and maybe they've kind of done their research on other platforms like Glassdoor or LinkedIn, and then they go to their, your careers website and all they want is what are your list of jobs? You know, so you, that's one of the things you have to make sure is either right at the top of your page, or at least there's a link, some kind of call to action. That's here's our jobs. Like if this is your goal of just coming to the site to go look at our open positions, here you go. If not, like we'll give you the content you need to kind of consider us further. Um, and I think the the pieces of content that are the most important to me are showing your EVP employee value proposition. That's super important if you have one. Um, and if you don't definitely make one, <laughs> it's basically the answer to why should I want to work here? So it should kind of be a mix of uh, you know, your benefits and perks, um, your value of diversity, any like leadership development programs you have going. Maybe if, if you're a software company showing off how innovative you are, all those things should kind of be included in your EVP. Yeah, that kind of makes it difficult, right? Because let's say you've imagine, if you will, close your eyes and imagine you've got a landing page, you've got your career website at the very top, you've got maybe a hero image, something like that. Right underneath it, you've got the search uh, for jobs now box. And then you've got everything underneath there. As soon as they click that search button, they're gonna be going into a search list. So they're never gonna be able to access the rest of the information unless they go back to that page again and again, right? So I always find it's important to have that breadcrumb trail at the top so that they can mm -hmm. click back and forth. It's also important to kind of inject a lot of those employer branding messaging, um, either diversity messages or le leaders messages on that landing page also. You can do it in sidebars, you can do it in the top and the bottom um, and just throw that job description or the search result list up inside of a um, an iframe if you need to, right? That's kind of a sloppy mm -hmm. way of doing it. Because if you don't know what information is going to convince that candidate to apply to your job, it may not be, can I do the job? Do I want to do the job? Where is it located? And how much does it pay? There may see, be some other contributing factors, which they're not going to see if they're popped off that mm -hmm. first page. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of um, ATSs are kind of struggling with these days yeah. and a lot well, they of want to take over the website right <laughs> so they want to take they they want to control that career website but that's not the only content that candidates are interested in you know in a perfect world it would be kind of like careers website and ats all in one where it's just one page and everything you need is kind of there and it's very interactive it's all about real estate right driving them in mm -hmm. that funnel and making sure they you know capture the attention one of the things that we've always struggled with um, and on inside the PopMix agency is um, dealing with landing pages, right? So we do career webinars, we do video voicemail landing pages, things like that. So let's say we're doing a career webinar. We'll have a registration page and we'll, we'll try and ma match or mimic the client's uh, branding as closely as possible. All the buttons all will be exactly so if they have rounded buttons or, you know, a certain imagery or a font, all caps, bold, et cetera. We'll match that. But then what happens is if we continue that same branding through the webinar page and then the R apply redirect page, what happens is if we redirect it into the client ATS or CRM, usually that has completely different branding, wrong colors, the wrong kind of button, they're not square, they're rounded. Um, so everything changes on that because ATSs and CRMs don't let you control as much of the branding aspects mm -hmm. or even the fonts and things like that, that the normal AT or the normal website would. So, I mean, do you have a way to mm -hmm. overcome that? Which one should we be following? Yeah, I think a lot of ATSs, at least the more innovative kind of strategic ones, they've been allowing companies to kind of brand them more. Um, I know the one that we're on now, we're actually able to like add a YouTube video, but it has to be the same YouTube video for every job. And so it's like, you have to pick one video that somehow encompasses the whole company in any position that 
people would be interested in. So it's just kind of like an overall core PPS values video. Serums, if you're listening, allow <laughs> video on your stupid postings. I mean, it's Individual. not that complicated. Yeah, I mean, Individual come on. Ones. <laughs> video has increased 3000% or whatever it is over the last three years. So get get with it. Mm -hmm. so, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's something that a lot of them are kind of working on. And so I hope that we see more of those like changes in the future. One of the problems is you're pulling from a big RSS feed, um, you know, or you've got maybe it's pretty easy to manage when you have 10 or 20 jobs. But when you've mm -hmm. got you know, uh, 500 or a thousand jobs and it becomes a little bit difficult to manage. So do you have a master video that gets posted on every job? Do you have mm -hmm. master and then um, subordinate videos and, you know, do you post those on certain categories of jobs? So there's ways around it, but they're time consuming, right? Mm -hmm. So what about like connecting with people? You, you mentioned LinkedIn. Um, and it was the LinkedIn uh, Pipeline Builder, right? So when you're doing campaigns in LinkedIn Pipeline Builder, what kind of things should they be um, or people should be thinking about to maintain that brand consistency? Like I said, kind of when you're overall planning the campaign and actually creating the assets for the creative and all of that, definitely connect with your marketing team. And then when the campaign is actually launched for generating leads through Pipeline Builder, it's really important to connect with the recruiter who's going to be the one kind of managing that LinkedIn project and make sure that they are showing an employer brand in the best way in terms of the messages that they're sending to those leads that kind of opt into that. I think candidate just emails are a huge important thing that, um, you know, some people have different styles of communicating like recruiters will be more straight and to the point, or some of them are very much like, oh my God, great to meet you, exclamation point, exclamation point, smiley face. <laughs> um, so I think it's really important to kind of connect with your recruiter who's going to be in charge of that and make sure that they're on the same page. And even by providing them like example, email templates um, to kind of make sure that they're doing kind of what you know is the right thing in terms of your employer brand. Um, those are my kind of key you know, we, tips. We had a, uh, back in my RPO days, we had a client that um, was very adamant that none of the recruiters should be using emojis, um, you know, the little smiley faces and things like that, you know, thumbs up and stuff like that in anywhere, in any of the postings, on social media posts, on any of their emails or LinkedIn posts, et cetera. They said, no emojis, we don't like them. And then I showed them some data. Um, I forget who put it out, but somebody had put out some data where any kind of posts or emails that had emojis in it had like a 30% higher response rate or click-through mm -hmm. rate. Um, and we got them to change their mind, right? So <laughs> emojis absolutely are engaging. I have no idea what the psychology <laughs> is behind that, but I mean, like, okay. <laughs> I see a My, smiley face. Yeah, I want to click on it. Jeff, what's your favorite emoji? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, dude, it's a, the poop emoji. I mean, how can you beat it, right? <laughs> My, mine's the smiley with the stars for eyes. <laughs> okay, that one's pretty cool. He's like, superstar. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a classic. I always thought the, the poop emoji was a pudding emoji, though, for the longest time. So I, we're I think like, it's ice supposed to be. <laughs> I think it's been called the poop emoji. I think poop emoji has been taken over. I originally thought it was that um, soft serve ice cream, right? And I was like, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. There's no ice cream cone. There's no cup. Mm -hmm. Why would you just put it out on your, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's been uh, hijacked. So mm -hmm. what about organizing your assets? Where would you, like, you've got a lot of images, you've got maybe some templates for emails, um, some examples of what a good tone or good voice would be for your brand's, employer brand's personality. You've got color brand, uh, palettes and logos and you know potentially some fonts, things like that. Mm -hmm. Where do you keep all these things? At Docebo, Google Docs and Google Drive is definitely our best friend. Um, and that's where we store everything. And I love Google. I know some people are more Microsoft people, or they have, you know, specific tools that they've bought 
for content management, but um, I've always just used Google Drive and, you know, that's worked great for me. <laughs> what about your videos? Are you hosting those on YouTube or where do you like to put, put those? Yeah, so we host pretty much all of our videos on YouTube. Um, and if we do need the raw video file for like some, some platform, then uh, we just store those in, in Google Drive. Okay, yeah, so we do kind of the same thing. Um, however, on any of our landing pages, we will not use YouTube because of the potential of having uh, competitor brand, you know, mm. uh, ads and things like that show up on there. So we use either Wistia or Vimeo to host the video. This way we can control, you know, there's no ads mm. and things like that on there. Um, so that's a good idea there. We also use Google Drive to manage all of our stuff and we use a shared drive. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a marketing calendar or, I mean, marketing calendars are really good when you know that, you know, you've got, let's say you've got evergreen positions that always need recruitment marketing, right? So you're always going to be hiring customer service or you're always going to be hiring sales. So you put together a content calendar once a month, once a quarter, whatever, and you just have content coming out. And then you may have a master content calendar for your overall employer brand. So Q1, we're going to be pushing you know, the theme of diversity inclusion, you know, Q2, we're going to be pushing whatever, um, leadership in general and how coaching and mentoring and all that stuff is important in our, our company. Um, do you guys have like a master employer brand marketing calendar? And then let's say uh, subordinate marketing calendars mm -hmm. for that. Um, yeah. So we have, I have my own kind of like employer brand um, content calendar type of thing with lots of ideas and kind of rough timelines for things. And then I actually meet with the social media marketing team every Monday and they have their uh, master calendar for all things social media. And so we kind of just connect every Monday and we say, what's going on this week? Um, what's going on next week? What do we need to kind of get ready for um, in the coming month? And so I found that that's a really great way to kind of keep everyone on track and keep everyone accountable because if you don't meet consistently with the marketing team and nothing, it's not going to get done because they're going to always push kind of their agenda first and be like, oh, we need to uh, market this new product or this other thought leadership piece type of thing. So it's very important to kind of keep that either weekly or monthly or whatever you can do connection. Sure. I mean, if the CEO is going to be speaking at a conference or you've got some kind of special keynote, it would be mm -hmm. nice to know ahead of time. So you're not overlapping messaging and things like that. Mm -hmm. Although I think that there's a little bit of wiggle room because what less than 10% of the people that you're marketing to actually see your message. So the more times mm -hmm. you have more content you throw out there, the better it is. But one of the complexities that I've seen inside of companies is that their employer brand, any kind of campaigns that they put together, either on LinkedIn or Facebook or you know anywhere they're doing I, like, a lot of job boards or things like that. Um, anytime they're doing employer branding, it doesn't help the individual requisition, right? So it, mm -hmm. it tends to be more general, right? So you're driving traffic, maybe, um, it's difficult to measure that. You're talking hits on a website as opposed to individuals on a landing page. You're not capturing, doing lead capture, things like that. Um, how do you break it down? Say, uh, we need to hire for this position. Are you going down to that level or are you just staying kind of periphery at the, at the surface there? Yeah. I mean, I think in terms of the corporate uh, social accounts, um, you know, it's important to either keep it high level or department level. Like those are kind of what I think are appropriate for like a social media post. But then when you do need to get kind of more granular and there's these specific open recs, um, you know, there's things that you can do with employee advocacy and, you know, not having to use your corporate LinkedIn and Facebook and all of that, just using your actual employees and their own social accounts and providing them with that messaging and here's the link to the job and all of that good stuff. I think that's kind of when you do need to get specific, that's the angle you should push. And then if like your sales department's hiring a ton in Q2, then 
sure, there can be some kind of post on LinkedIn and Facebook and all of that for from your company, kind of describing that or even like a video from that leader. Um, I think that's really great. But yeah, I do agree. It's like you can't just be posting on LinkedIn every day. Like we have a product manager position. We have a SaaS sales position, you know. <laughs> yeah, like it's, I mean, listen, best way to put a candidate to sleep is here's mm-hmm. another job posting, another job posting, another job posting, right? You mm-hmm. need something other than a text based job description mm-hmm. to really capture the attention these days. I mean, you go on LinkedIn, that's all you, my newsfeed is, is <laughs> text based job description or, you know, a little graphic we're hiring and stuff like that. And I was like, I, I can't believe you think this is actually going to, you know, capture anybody's attention. And if you look at it, there's zero comments, zero shares, zero likes. Um, you might get somebody, a couple people internal to the organization to look at it. But yeah, I think that you, you need to get it in front of people's uh, eyes a, a little bit differently than just kind of passively posting it on LinkedIn or Facebook. It's not going to work that way. That's just mm-hmm. my opinion. Call me crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think encouraging employees to add something unique or special or personal in that post, it's like, here's a link to the posting, but also it's like, this is why I love working at this company, yada, 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 or even better, like you said, video is king. So if they do a little 20 second video and a link to the job posting, that would be amazing. Yeah, that that is very difficult to manage, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, doing those kind of uh, employee testimonials is what we call them. Um, and getting them to post those consistently is it's it's a lot of work, right? I mean, there are tools out there. Video My Job has a great uh, you know option for mm-hmm. capturing these uh, employee testimonials and then pushing them out. Uh, shout out to David there at uh, Video My Job, but um, you know there's lots of ways to do it. It's just it, it takes time, money, and effort to do it, yep. right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's um, where a lot of companies fall short because they want to do these things and, but they don't have a person in place like me, like a whole resource who's kind of, that's their job. And so they kind of expect like recruiters to pick it up as like a side job to their real job. And it's like, and (laughs) no one can do that. <laughs> well, recruiter, everything gets thrown on the recruiter, right? Yeah. So, hey, we need you to source, and now we want mm-hmm. you to do the marketing, and now you have to be a social media expert, and now you have to be <laughs> an advertising expert, and make sure you pick the right job boards, and now yeah. you got to be, you know, a marketing intelligence yep. and know it, where your target yep. companies are, and now you have now to be have a to be talent a, development consultant yes. too, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be a therapist to the, the hiring manager, and it just, I mean, everything gets dumped on that uh, recruiter, mm-hmm. so. I did it for too many years and still do mm-hmm. it. So I love recruiting. It's just, it's gotten so much more complex than when I just had a desk and a phone. Um, mm-hmm. And that still works, believe me. So what about one of the biggest misses that I see that companies should be doing is they're not repurposing content. Do you know any, I mean, can you give mm-hmm. me a few seconds about repurposing content and how you might be able to do that to help the employer brand? Yes, I completely agree. And it's definitely something that I still struggle with. I think it's something a lot of companies struggle with um, is like you create this awesome thing and then you post it out into social media and you're like, okay, we're done. Now we're moving on to the next. But I think everyone needs to do a better job of repurposing those pieces of content, you know, including them in your candidate communications, updating those candidate templates that you have in your ATS, um, you know, kind of refreshing those every now and again. Um, I'm going to write that down for to-do list. I mean, if you think about it on the marketing side, usually they break this, the social media manager into two different positions. If the company is budget, right. Um, Most larger corporations, they'll have a content manager and then a social media manager. The content manager is responsible for developing the overall messaging content they'll develop content like lead magnets and pdfs and you know they'll they'll try and get the um the executives or at least the ceo scheduled for uh various podcasts or um speaking in front of conferences things like that um but then all that content sits with them inside of Mm -hmm. marketing and 
there's no reason why you shouldn't be repurposing that content inside of your employer brand or inside of your recruitment marketing to attract candidates. This is a huge miss on most companies' parts is what I'm finding. So I'm thinking about, you know, how could there be created like an employer brand content manager? Just like there's an employer branding social media manager, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. position exists. That's kind of what the employer brand manager is or employer brand specialist. Uh, but there should be a content manager that knows both the content on the marketing side and you know, strategically how that could be used to attract candidates to the organization. Totally I agree. Yeah, I think it'd be, I, I also think it'd be super helpful for, you know, a lot of times marketing teams are very strapped for resources and people. What? And sometimes <laughs> they're, you know, social media person is doing like, they're doing the website, they're doing blogs, they're doing social, like, it's yeah, I love when crazy. prospects like anytime <laughs> I'm selling clients say, Well, I've got a marketing team. Okay, but how much time are they actually allocating to employer branding and recruitment mm -hmm. marketing? About five yeah. percent of the time. You need somebody five percent, you need somebody hundred percent. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. It's like if you want to have a very comprehensive kind of marketing team or de or department, you need to make sure that they're bringing in people from all aspects of the business, you know, HR, employer brand, but also uh, product, uh, sales, you know, customer service. It's like they need to have all of that in mind and kind of remember to uh, incorporate all of that on social and, and in a good way where it's all kind of going out at different times and different days. You can't just have like 10 employer brand type posts in a row and then be like, here's our new product. So <laughs> I got to yeah, have 30 think, posts today. <laughs> I don't need 30 posts today. I need it spread out over the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Anytime you're dealing with a news feed, right? You've got a very brief, limited time. Very rarely does that um, article or blog post or job description show up in that news feed for very long, right? Mm -hmm. It's usually a couple, maybe half an hour to an hour if you're lucky, unless it starts getting traction. Um, so you have to be aware of that and um, LinkedIn, especially, or any of the Facebook pages, groups, things like that. Um, it, if you have a lot more control, if it's your Facebook group or your Facebook page, but if it's somebody else's that has a lot of activity, which is what you want, and it's got 10, 20, 30 posts a day, then you're going to be at the bottom by the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So you basically have a, you know, an hour or two, if you're lucky, to really capture that attention. So you got to make it good. You know, the hook, everybody, if you don't know what a hook is, um, watch <laughs> the beginning of this video because that's a hook. You got to get people interested in <laughs> on your stuff. All right, Haley, any last thoughts? This has been a great conversation. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest things are that companies now more than ever need someone in an employer branding role at their organizations. And if they don't, they need to hire someone to do that, especially if they see themselves growing in the future. Just making sure that if you are in this type of role, um, become best friends with your marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> or hire me, right? That's what I do, right? <laughs> and become yes. best friends with me. Yes, so, perfect. Uh, Haley, thank you so much for uh, coming on to the 10X k Experience Show. I think uh, you, you provided some absolutely fantastic insights, especially into how to maintain control over there. All right, everybody. Make it a great one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye.